So I will let you uh, introduce you a bit. Hi, um, I'm Martin Kerstein and I'm a community manager with ArenaNet. I'm Isaiah Cartwright and I'm the game designer in charge of combat. So uh, we will begin by uh, talking a bit about the Guild Wars franchise. So uh, three campaigns, one expansion, it's quite a success. We're, we're very proud of how well Guild Wars has been. And, uh, uh, do you have uh, already some uh, uh, goals for the second uh, for the second game? Yeah, I think the basic goal of any game is that well, the fans enjoy it, and it's a lot of fun to play. So it's very much the direction we're going. Yeah, our goal is to create a game that we hope everybody out there will just love and want to play. I mean, it's like we. Everybody in our studio, we are gamers, so we make a game that we love to play and we like make it for the folks out there and we just hope that everybody out there loves it and will play it. So, uh, well, to talk more uh, about the game, uh, what are the basics you you kept from the first game to, to build uh, the second one? Um, I can talk about the story you kept. world materia, any of the races are races that you see before you can play the human, which are But the world has advanced by 250 years, so we've got new technology, we've got guns and cannons, we've got golems, high magic technology that's been brought into the world over the years. The borders have shifted a lot, but you'll recognize the continent, you'll recognize locations, you'll recognize locations, and you'll recognize uh, pieces of the world from the first game that should be familiar to players. And uh, uh, about the, the community, how, how will it uh, integrate? What, uh, what do you keep uh, from the community of the first game? So uh, we have a whole system that allows you to uh, bring over um, different achievements and things that you've uh, earned from Guild Wars 1 through the Hall of Monuments. Um, you can do all sorts of different um, activities and uh, titles and achievements and mini pets and uh, different things that you've done in Guild Wars 1, a collection of um, just kind of monuments and um, achievements and tasks and things that you've done in Guild Wars 1 and you can bring those things into the Hall of Monuments and then those things then can get tied to your account in Guild Wars 2 and uh, you can go on onto our website and you can see even what you're going to get into Guild Wars 2 and uh, uh, even now. So. And uh, as we are on the community, uh, do you plan some uh, uh, with the smartphones, uh, an app to follow what you are doing in the game? Uh, yeah, we have uh, currently, uh, um, not only do we have on our uh, website the thing that you can uh, uh, access, but we're going to have uh, some uh, external uh, tools that you can access on an uh, uh, iPhone app and or an Android and uh, will allow you to um, uh, do some other kind of activities through that as well. So uh, for Guild Wars 2, uh, you have many new features. Uh, the first one and the big one is uh, it's now a persistent world. Why the change? So uh, I think one of the biggest reasons why we went over to a persistent world uh, was we really found that um, uh, when people move around a world and are experiencing uh, the content and things, we really wanted to um, change up the way that people experience content and the way they experience um, kind of playing through a game. We really wanted to bring players together in an MMO and really, um, you know, make their involvement as playing a game together. And uh, it's a lot harder to do that when they're all in their own instance and they're all spread out through a game. And so we really wanted to put them into a persistent world and we really wanted them to fight challenges together, whether it be, uh, you know, 500 foot dragons or whether it be, uh, you know, dealing with a horde of centaur attacking a village. And so uh, we, we found that Persistent World was the best way to do this. And, uh, you know, it was also 
kind of a, a thing that people always thought um, was the thing about Guild Wars 1 was the only way we could make it free was because it was instance. And that just was, wasn't true, it was just the way we decided to make Guild Wars 1. And so we, we wanted to also show that we could make Guild Wars 2 persistence and still maintain the values that we had of making it a um, you know, no subscription game. And so uh, making it a, a, a persistent game allowed us to bring everyone together, allow them to do all these exciting, fun challenges throughout the world. Well, talking about that, uh, how the, the event system will, uh, will work, uh, it seems pretty complex. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty involved, but it, it allows us to change up the way that uh, content is given to the players. Um, and, you know, not only do we get to tell a rich, in-depth uh, story through the quest system, but we get to tell a lot of story and interesting elements through the event system. And it is pretty complex in that uh, the events work off themselves in that um, if centaurs come in and attack a village and, um, you know, and the players are, don't defend it, the centaurs will um, take over that village and they'll kill all the NPCs there and they'll make that a base camp. And now the centaurs might start sending raids out to interesting places all over uh, the map from that village. That becomes a base camp for the centaurs. And if uh, players don't come in and drive the centaurs out of there, then the centaurs will start making base camps in other areas and it starts to become this hub. And so it, our events really do a lot of chaining and a lot of triggers and a lot of, um, you know, almost living and breathing within each and every map so that the maps themselves kind of have a, you know, a character to them and a story going on where maybe the centaurs and humans are fighting back and forth or, you know, maybe the broodmother's chasing off the villagers' uh, fishing supplies so that, uh, you know, he can't sell fish. And so it, it really allows for, um, you know, almost the world to exist even if the players aren't there to do anything about it. And so when a player comes into the world and starts interacting, he feels like he's part of the world, not that um, if he's not there, the world doesn't exist. So we will have to fight. <laughs> yeah. And so you, you've done a, a big job on the combat system too. Yeah. Can you talk a bit about that? Sure. Uh, we we kind of changed up um, some of the things that we did in Guild Wars 1 from the combat. One of the things is we've changed uh, the things that you're holding really determine the skills that you have. Um, you know, if you're holding a sword, you're going to be able to leap around and do damage uh, with that. If you're holding a mace, you're going to be able to stun enemies. So this allows you to kind of determine um, the skills and the build that you bring by what you're holding in your hands. Um, and this also switches over to our environments. If you're running through the world and you see a rock on the ground, you can pick up that rock and now your skills change over to throw a rock or if you're an elementalist you can summon a meteor from the sky and so this allows us to kind of um, really put the, the character into the world and interact with the world in a really visceral uh, you know physical way and so um, this also makes it just very intuitive right uh, as they're moving through the world and, and then um, it also ensures us that when you pick up a sword, you don't have to know a lot about the game in order to have a lot of good skills on your bar. You have a sword, a sword has a bunch of skills that um, do good things for you. And it really allows a casual player to just get in the game and go, hey, you know, I want to be a sword guy, and he does really well. Well, uh, the, the accessibility is uh, it's mostly because you, you choose to uh, no, contrary to games like World of Warcraft, you don't have uh, bars everywhere on the interface. Why this? Uh, why keeping this? Uh... So uh, we find that um, there's two real distinct types of players. There's a lot of casual players and there's a lot of hardcore players, and they're very two important uh, parts of the community, right? You you need people to be able to get into the game and very easily play the game without having to know this huge depth of knowledge. Um, but you need to make sure your game has a very strong amount of uh, you know, depth to it so that people can play it for a very long amount of time. But uh, So we want to make sure it's not too complex so that everyone can get into it and play it really easily but that there's a lot there. And so we really tried to make sure everything's really simple to get into but that there's a lot there. We found Guild Wars 1 uh, was a really complex game. It had a lot to it. Um, you had to know a lot about it and it was really intimidating for a lot of people when they got into it. And so we really tried to simplify things in Guild Wars 1 uh, from when you first get into it. We made it really quick to get into, really easy to start playing, really uh, quick to go, but we also gave it a lot of depth. 
You know, there's a lot of weapons. The warrior can wield, you know, tons and tons of weapons, and he has tons of traits and all these utility skills and elites and heal skills, and they all can mix match in tons of ways. But you can almost grab any combination of them, throw them on your bar, and it works. And so, because both of these things work, you can have a ton of depth in figuring out a, this awesome combination, but it's really hard to make a bad combination. And so, it really allows us to have a very casual setup and also have a, a very complex setup for both crowds. So, I will get back to the game world. Uh, how big it is? Um, it's the continent of Tyria, including all the way through the Makula jungle, all the way into Asgore. And uh, is there already some uh, some regions you would like to bring back that you had on the the uh, the, the two other campaigns of the first one? Um, right now, we just want to make Turia as amazing as it can be, and if that is well received, we'll look into the other areas of the world. But our primary focus has been on the, those lands. And. Uh, about uh, a bit about the how it will uh, run on uh, PCs. Uh, will it need a big uh, configuration? So, I mean, w one of the things that ArenaNet's always kind of focused on was making uh, the game run on really, you know, low-end machines. Um, you know, the exact specs and things we haven't released, but uh, you know, I think that uh, mentality and that uh, thing strength will will continue to support as low-end machines as possible. But you know, what the exact specifics uh, or, you know, specs of Guild Wars 2 we haven't really released. Uh, for for example, uh, the machines on the show floor is it. Uh uh, big ones or uh, well, it, it's kind of it's spec systems. That's actually the last step in the in the, in the development process. So you first develop everything, and then you um, optimize the code. So if I would tell you like what we are running on here, it's kind of pointless because this, when the game is will be released, it will be way different. So yeah, uh, how do you manage to keep it free? Well, I mean, I think uh, it's just one of the things that we've always tried to strive in uh, putting out a good product. We think there's many ways for uh, business models out there to work on the market, and uh, we really want to let our innovation push our game and um, get as many people to play our game and like our game for as many ways. And we think there's many different ways to sell uh, our products, and uh, we want to continue to push that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.